Hi, I'm Dr. Vijay Anand. I'm a clinical professor of otolaryngology and head and neck surgery at the Weill Medical College of Cornell University. I'd like to present in this video the surgical access to the minimally invasive surgical approach to skull base, the value of a team approach, and the success in the surgical closure and the exposure to the surgical site. The surgical approaches to the skull base can be broadly classified into four different types. The first one being the transnasal, transvenoidal approach to the pituitary fossa, which is the gateway to skull base. The transvenoidal approach helps in resecting tumors of the pituitary gland, the supracellular gland, and also in the plenum sphenoid alley, which is the roof of the sphenoid sinus. The second approach would be a transnasal, transethmoidal approach for tumors in the skull base in the region of the roof of the ethmoid sinus, which will include tumors like the osteomas, the meningiomas, and also the esthesian neuroblastomas, which are olfactory group tumors which can extend laterally from the midline into the roof of the ethmoid sinus. The third approach would be a transnasal, transethmoidal, transpterygoidal approach, where the surgical procedure is helpful in identifying and removing tumors in the lateral wall of the sphenoid sinus, in the cavernous sinus, and also tumors of the infratemporal fossa and the pterygomaxillary fossa. The most important point in all these surgical access procedures is identifying the vascular supply to that area and also identifying the important blood vessels, namely the internal carotid artery in the sphenoid sinus and preserving it along with its branches, and secondly, the sphenopalatine artery in the trans approach. The fourth approach would be a transnasal pure approach to the skull base, which will involve tumors of the olfactory groove, namely the esthesian neuroblastoma, and also the posterior covenal tumors, which will be the clival tumors, which could be a chordoma or a metastatic lesion to the clivus, or tumors of C1 and C2. Basically, this approach is, even though it is classified into four different types, there's always a certain amount of overlapping among each of these approaches. And hence, there is not one single approach which will be suitable for all tumors. The second part of this most interesting video on these approaches that we'd like to present is the team approach with the neurosurgical uh, team. At Weill Cornell, I work with Dr. Ted Schwartz, and we have done close to 250 cases where we have been successful in removing, resecting, and also successfully closing tumors without complications. There are also an important factor that one needs to consider when you perform these kind of procedures, namely the surgical closure, which can be planned well ahead with the use of the image guided system. The image guidance, which could be based on CT scan or the MR scan, will help in identifying the volume of the size of the tumor and the size of the defect and also in the successful closure. The closure material that we favor most at our institution is the autologous graft which could be the fat and adipose tissue from the abdomen or the fascia ladder from the thigh. In order to augment the closure adequately and also prevent superadded secondary infection, we use flow seal, which is a biological dressing, on top of either Duracell or Tiseal. Duracell is much more popular in our series than Tiseal. The most important advent or improvement in this skull-based surgical procedure is the value of image guidance which helps us to volume measure the tumor and also plan our surgical closure even at the time of excision. So as the surgery is being performed with both hands through both nostrils with instruments which is provided and developed by call stores, we find that we can have a panoramic exposure to the surgical site and also successfully close at the end of surgery with the autologous graft that is available in the patient. Thank you.